My dear brothers and sisters, last Friday in Egypt, a Christian church and a Christian gathering were attacked by some extremists. Some 50 people almost were killed. Many others were injured. This incident had caused a big uproar in the world. Many bloggers and others started talking about Muslims not respecting the rights of Christians and other minorities. <clears throat> Many were criticizing Islam and Muslims as well for a poor record dealing with minorities, especially with the Christians. And they cite incidents in Iraq two months ago where another church, another Christian church in Baghdad was attacked. Last week in Egypt, in Sudan, here and there. Well, let's establish a fact here. That those who are involved in these acts, they do not represent our faith. These people belong to a very small and fringe group who do not represent mainstream Muslims. Indeed, these people, these extremists have killed more Muslims than Christians. They have been involved in bloodshed of Muslims for last at least 10 years in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Yemen, in Somalia, in Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, in Indonesia, in many other countries. This group has been involved in attacking and killing Muslims and non-Muslims as well. And they do not differentiate between the two. And they have no regard for the human life. So why we hold Islam responsible for their acts? Why some people are blaming Islam for that? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Man qatala dhimmiyan لم يرح رائحة الجن وإن رائحتها لا توجد من مسيرة خمسمائة عام. The Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says he who kills a dhimmi who is a dhimmi a dhimmi is any Christian or a Jew who lives among Muslims. It's called dhimmi from dhimma honor an honored person person who trusts Muslims' faith in protecting his life. That's why he is called Dhimmi. If someone kills a Christian or a Jew who lives among Muslims, who lives in the Muslim countries, a Jew or a Christian who is not fighting with Muslims, he lives with them in peace and in peaceful coexistence. If someone kills this person, the Prophet says, will never smell the fragrance of heaven. And the fragrance of heaven could be felt from 500 years. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ was very particular about protecting people's right and people's life. And he would never condone disrespecting another human being for his religion 
not alone killing that person. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, he treats Jews and Christians in his government with dignity and respect. He walks with a Christian person. They, they both happen to be traveling. And the Imam travels with the man. And then when they decided to depart, the Imam takes an extra step to offer a farewell bit to his companion in his trip. And the man says, I thought you were going to Kufa, but you're coming with me to Basra. The Imam says, no, I'm not coming to Basra with you. I just came to offer my farewell to you. I came to offer my respect to you. Again, while being the highest authority in his country, the caliph of the time, a Jewish person, he, the Imam alayhi salam finds his shield with a Jewish person. And the Imam tells the man that this is my shield. And the man refuses to give it to the Imam. And the Imam decided to sue him, to go to the court. Now the Imam didn't have to sue him, he could just have taken the shield and that was it. That was it. The Imam decided to go through the legal channel in restoring his own shield. They both went to the judge, Shuraih. And the Imam filed a suit. And then the judge was showing so much respect to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib as being the caliph. He would call him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. The Imam says, Don't call me in the court, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. I'm a citizen here. You call me by my name, you call him by his name. The judge wanted to give the Imam a privileged status by asking the Imam to sit with him on the bench. The Imam said, I'm not going to sit on the bench. I sit in the court next to my, my opponent. And then the judge asked the Imam alayhi salam that you say this shield is yours. Do you have two witnesses? The Imam says, no, I don't have two witnesses. The judge says then that I have to give the shield to the Jewish person if you don't have witnesses. The Imam says, fine. I know it is my shield, but I don't have two witnesses. The judge hands the shield to the Jewish person. And the Imam comes out of the court with no shield. And the Jewish person co goes to the Imam alayhi salam. And he says, now I know that you are a true and honest man. Now I'm willing even to embrace your faith. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah You're such a just ruler that you could have taken the shield from me, but you did not. You were very just with me. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam advises Muslims to be nice and courteous and kind to other people, including non-Muslims, including our non-Muslim brothers and sisters. And Islam would never, would never condone, would never condone attacking another person simply because He's non-Muslim. لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُقْسِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ Be just and be kind to those non-Muslims who never fought against you, who have never driven you out of your homes. Be good, be nice to them, and be just with them. Do not harass them. Do not attack them. So my dear brothers and sisters, as Muslims living in this country, you might be asked, you might be asked about these incidents, incidents that taking place in the Muslim world nowadays, here and there. They will ask you why these incidents are taking place, why these attacks against, the, as, against Christians in the Muslim world. We do not condone this. We do not accept that. Our faith does not accept that. 
Our Islam does not accept that. Our Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would never tolerate attacking an innocent person simply because he embraces another faith. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, I am so confident that those who are attacking non-Muslims, especially the Christians, especially the Christians in the Muslim world, they have an agenda. Indeed, all they are trying to do is to divide one community and to bring chaos and instability to the, to the Muslim countries. They are trying to make Muslims and Coptic fight in Egypt. They are trying to see Muslims and Chaldeans fighting in Iraq. They want to see Muslims and Christians fighting in Lebanon. They want to see Muslims and Christians fighting everywhere there is a, a Christian community and minority. And imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, if the Western world, who is predominantly Christian, if decided to reciprocate and treat us mutually, just like some Christians are treated in the Muslim world, what would happen here in America? What would happen in France, where 10% of, of the population is Muslim? What would happen in England, where there are at least 4 million Muslims living there? What would happen to Muslims in the United States, where there are at least 6 to 8 million Muslims living in this country? Indeed, I believe those who are attacking Christians in Egypt, in Iraq, in Pakistan, they are giving a pretext, they are giving a pretext to some extremists in the West to attack Muslims and to go after them. Therefore, we Muslims have to be clear on this issue. We have to condemn any attack that is directed against innocent people, be it Muslims or non-Muslims, be it Christian or Jew or Muslim who is innocent. We should not tolerate any attack against any innocent person, my dear brothers and sisters, because we don't want Islam to be held responsible for these atrocities. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. واخذوا للكفر والمنافقين أيد وسدد حماة الدين اللهم اجعل كلمتك هي العليا وكلمة الكفر هي السفلى اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك قاضي الحاجات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ولشفاء مرضانا وقضاء حوائجنا نقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة